Welcome to our 12th video with data structures and algorithms. And in this video, um, we're going to continue finding running times and time complexities. And this time we're going to do it with uh, recursion involved. So we've been denoting our time complexities with T of n. So our algorithm, right, should run in some sort of T of n, right? Our, our function is going to look like this, T of n equals something. So when we come down here, we can see that this just runs once, right? Any time that this is called, this runs once, right? And then this runs as many times, right? But it runs once and then so on. And here, we can see that we have a recursive call, right? So it will be, its time complex complexity will be t of n, but except uh, the input is uh, half the size of our original. So, t of n over 2, right? So if we just write that, over here we have t of, well, it looks like h, let's redo that, t of n over 2 plus 1. Now how do we figure this out? Oh, well, we uh, have learned a method in class uh, called the master method master method and we saw that if we have a function of the form right, t of n is equal to a times t of n over b plus f of n then we can use the master method so just to reiterate really quickly, right? We have three cases, right? Case one says if f of n is big O, then log base b of a minus epsilon, okay, minus a positive epsilon, then t of n is theta, and log base b of a, and it's a little small, but just reviewing here. Then we got case 2, which says that if f of n is theta n log base b of a, then t of n is theta n log base b of, uh, oh, oops log base b of a log n and case 3 says oh whoops I messed that up if f of n is big omega n log base b of a plus epsilon right again positive epsilon there's another condition okay and a times f of n over b is less than or equal to some constant c times f of n for that constant less than one and for all input n sufficiently large that's what that says for all sufficiently large n then you have t of n is theta f of n. Okay, so there's a little review of that. So <clears throat> if we take uh, this method here and we just start to kind of see what we have, right? We have a is equal to 1. And we have a b that is equal to 2. And our f of n is equal to 1. So what do we do? Well, Another thing we do, each one of these has a log base b of a. So what is log b of a? For us, that's log 2 of 1, which is 0. So we're going to plug this in over here. Let's see uh, what we have, right? We have 1 less than or equal to, we're going to try big O, right? Less than or equal to some constant. times n to the minus 
epsilon, right? Because that was n to the 0 minus some positive epsilon. Right, and clearly, here this is not uh, this is not going to work out for us, right? So how about um, a different one? How about the second one? <clears throat> so here, we're saying that there's some constant one, right, times n to the zero, less than or equal to one, less than or equal to some other constant, times n to the zero, which says that there exists constant C1 and C2, such that one is uh, between the two, okay? And here, that's good. We can definitely find uh, such positive constants that this is true. Now, just to show case three really quick, since we're working through all of them, uh, this was case one, and this was case two, and here is case three. Really, we can check this right away. Right, we can say we have one times one, that's f of n over b for us, less than or equal to some c times, uh, oops, c times one, for a c that is less than one, and clearly, Right, this breaks down once we do that. So this is no good either. So we found that this is case two. Okay, right here, case two was good for us. Thus, our t of n is theta log, oops, log n, since n so the log base b of a for us is 1, right? That's 1 times log n. Let's try a different algorithm now. How about this one? Well, we know that this is going to be t of n. We know that all of these run in constant time right here. So we're going to denote that with big O1. Here we're taking, if you, if you check this algorithm, we're recursively calling this on um, a third of each uh, or a third of our input, if you will, each of these, t of n over 3. Okay, so we know, I'm going to write this on a new page in a second, but t of n is going to be equal to um, 3 times t of n over 3 plus some constant. Okay, we'll just call it, we're actually going to call it our, we'll just say our constant. Okay? So, now let's just... Um, Let's take this away for a second. And uh, we can also we can also take these away because we wrote that down already. And let's just make some space for ourselves so we can continue this. There we go. Now how are we going to figure this out? Let's try one of our other methods, which is the uh, recursion tree, right? recursion tree and basically what we're going to do is we're going to try and visualize this right so t of n and here's our constant and then this we're going to add right three of these t of n's t of n over three t of n over 3, and t of n over 3. So <coughs> here you can see we have our constant, right, right here, and our three, uh, you know, recursive uh, parts here. Well, now we can just break down each one of these. Well, as you can see, 
this is going to be you know b these all have the constant b associated with them and they all have a t over n or t of n over 9 right and another t of n over 9 and t of n over 9 okay plus plus there's the 3 for that one there then we have another 3 right we have 3 times t of n over 9 and another 3 t n over 9 and we're going to keep doing this right this will equal this will have a b and a b and a b da 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 da, da. we're going to do this all the way down till we get to t of 1 right our base case now the idea is to count however many we get now however many of these constants we get because these we can actually count this is the only countable thing here right so here we have uh, 1 b and here we have 3 b's and here you can see that we'll have 3 here 3 here and 3 here so we'll have 9 b there that's a 9 and all the way down until we have some number, right, k of b's. And you can see that also we're adding these, right? There's also, there's a plus, plus this, this, plus all this, and, and so on. So we have to add these up. So we have a summation here. Let's see if we can recognize something uh, through this. So, so far we have a 1, right plus 3 plus um, 9 plus dot 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 plus right, and we should have n of these so we have n here right because we start with n and we just divide it up by 3 and continually divide it up by 3 until we got down to n over n right which is one okay so we do that so we have a summation here now <clears throat> if you recall the geometric series looks like this one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 All right and this ends up equaling right to x to the m and this is equal to x to the m plus one minus one over x minus 1. This is called the geometric series. And now we can use that because obviously we have that same form here. Now let's uh, use a different color. Here our x is equal to 3. And so we can see that 1 plus 3 to the 1 plus 3 squared plus 3 cubed plus dot, 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 3 to the m is equal to that. And we have to find this m really quickly. So how do we do that? Well, if we set n equal to 3 to the m, as we have here, right? We're just trying to mimic this here, right? 1, 3, 9, and so on. Well, we can see that we can use logarithms here, right? This is log 3 of n is equal to m. So now that we have x, we have m, OK? Now we can use this equation. So let me grab a different color. Let's just do this one. Let's see what we have here. So we have 3 raised to the log 3 of n plus 1 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. Now, if we just erase this, make ourselves some room, log 3 raised to the log 3 of n is actually equal to n. And we have a plus 1, so this is one more 3. So we have 3, right, times 3 log n, or whoops, log base 3 of n minus 1 over 
3 minus 1 is 2. Remember we said that this is n, this little piece right here. Thus we have 3 minus 1, oops, not 3 minus 1, 3n minus 1 over 2, and that's it. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, we just calculated what t of n actually equals to. It was a summation, and that summation ended up equaling this equation here. Now, if we look at this, I'm going to um, erase this. We found that this is equal to 3n minus 1 over 2, which is really just 3 halves n minus 1 half. And now we can see very clearly that this is simply a linear algorithm. There's n right there. Now, <clears throat> quickly, if you're thinking, why is this linear, right? When we did merge sorts, our algorithm ended up being, right, our time, our running time, ended up being um, theta n, whoops, theta n log n. And here clearly, right, this is just a linear function, so this one should be theta n. Now why is that? We divided it by 3, we did all the same stuff, but one thing that we did not do is we didn't do anything, let's close this, we didn't do anything after, after this at all. We did nothing here. There's no other, um, there's no other algorithm here, there's no other function here, but for merge sort, there was a linear time function here. Now, for us, what does that mean? Well, basically, here, what we did is, I'm just going to erase this because we don't need this anymore. What we essentially ended up doing in our algorithm is we simply divided our input by 3, Right, and then we divided this one by 3, and we did it all the way until we were down to one element. Therefore, it would not, um, nothing could be divided anymore. So we visited that element. Then we did the same for this, th this uh, second third. Right, there was only one element here, so we can't go any farther. We went to this one, there was only one element, so we were done with that. Thus, we were done with this one. Same thing here, 1, 1, and 1. We were done, 1, 1, and 1, and we we're done. Now, if you notice, as I'm doing this, we're visiting each one, because each one of these is our base case. Okay, and nothing, we're not doing anything else. There's nothing else to, to take advantage of us, um, of the fact that we are uh, dividing this up into three pieces recursively and, and, and doing something recursively. So we didn't really do anything in this algorithm. You can see that we just find it and we just call the algorithm and it just splits it up into three and then doesn't do anything else. So um, you can see why this is actually a linear function from what we have calculated.